glide. Oh, as long as I have momentum, I know I will collide. <laughs> oh, whoa, what a collision! How's that work? Hey there. So, if you remember Newton's third law that says forces come in pairs, equal in magnitude but opposite in direction, or for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, that's where our next topic, conservation of momentum, actually comes from. So looking at that, with Newton's third law, we can say whatever the force on one object has to be equal and opposite to the force on the other object. That's why the negative sign's there. Well, whenever a collision happens, whenever things hit one another, they collide for the same amount of time. So I'm just adding an, a delta T to each of those to represent the collision. Bam, they're hitting for this amount of time. Well, because F delta T, if you remember from earlier, F delta T is equal to M delta V. And this M delta V over here, that represents the change in momentum. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, because F delta T is equal to change in momentum, I'm going to substitute change in momentum in over here. So what this really says is change in momentum on one object is equal and opposite to the change in momentum on the other object. In other words, whatever momentum is gained by one thing in a collision is equal to the momentum lost in the other object in that collision. Six pounds, 10 pounds. Collision. was a crazy collision. Watch out there, Mr. Hosler. Now, we want to look at the conservation of momentum. As Mr. Hosler said, the momentum of both objects before the collision has to equal the momentum of both objects after the collision. So the momentum lost by one object has to be equal to the momentum gained by the other. So here we have it set up. We have the momentum of the first ball plus the momentum of the second ball before they hit equal to the momentum of the first ball plus the momentum of the second ball after they hit. So we set it up with our numbers. We said our first ball had a mass of three kilograms and was moving at a velocity of 10 meters per second to the right. The second ball had a mass of five kilograms and was moving at 15 meters per second to the left. Now, after that collision, we calculated that that second ball that was initially moving to the left eventually started moving back two meters per second to the right. But we don't know how fast that purple ball was coming right back at Mr. Hosler as he was running away for his life. So let's calculate it. Here we have three times 10, so that gives us a value of 30. Plus 15, negative 15 times five, that would be negative 75. That's gonna be equal to three kilograms times V1 prime. We still don't know what that velocity is, that final velocity for that purple ball. Whoa, what's that prime mean, Mr. Mr. Uh, Martin? That prime is the velocity for the ball after the collision. Oh, nice. Good question. 10 here. 30 plus negative 75 gives us negative 45. We still don't know that, so we're just going to keep it together. I forgot my G up here. Always make sure we have the right units. Plus 10. Now. We want to get 10 over to the other side. I'm going to subtract it. I'm going to subtract it over here as well. Negative 55 is equal to three kilograms times V1 prime divided by three kilograms. We're going to get a V1 prime of 18.3 meters per second. Now, which way was it going, Mr. Hosler? To the left, to the left. To the left, to the left indeed. It must be negative. And there you have it. Everything you own in a box to the left. what I call an explosion. Now, another type of explosion, because it is actually a special type of momentum collision problem, uh, is something that's not moving, but then phew, 
some sort of explosion happens and things are moving apart. That's what you actually just saw with Mr. Martin chucking that weight. So let's look at how the math and how we solve a problem dealing with that. So the actual collision ex itself we consider is the toss of that ball or the explosion of things. So before anything happens at all, the momentum's zero because nothing's moving. What happens after the collision is, let's make the mass of the weight, we'll call that M1, V1, after, plus M2, V2, after. Mr. Martin was moving afterwards, he's M2. The weight he chucked, it was moving well after he threw it. So let's throw in some values here. Once again, nothing was moving before the toss, so that total momentum was zero before the collision. So I have zero equals M1, that was 20 kg, that's a 45, swells the goal, sizes the prize. Now we actually used some projectiles to figure out how fast he threw it. He threw it at about five meters per second, that's about 12 miles an hour. If you've ever tried to chuck something that's 20 pounds, it's not easy to throw really fast. Plus, Mr. Martin, fit and trim guy, he's about 80 kilograms, 80 kg, and I want to know how fast was he going backwards after he threw that weight. So we're going to find the velocity of Mr. Martin after the collision. So I have zero still equals, that's going to be 20 times 5, that gives me 100 plus 80 still times that velocity after. So 80 times the velocity of how fast Mr. Mark was going backwards. I'm moving that puppy to the other side. I have to subtract both sides by 100. So I have negative 100 is equal to 80 V2 after. You might be thinking, whoa, that's negative. What's going on? Well, he's moving to the left. So that should be negative. 100 divided by 80 gives me a velocity of Mr. Martin after the collision equal to 1.25 meters per second. Don't forget that negative because he's going to the left. Stay safe out there, you cool cats and kittens.